potato. Twice baked potatoes are an absolute favorite in our household. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I make these in batches and put them in the freezer and use them all year long. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today we are back in the kitchen and I am making something that my son happened to request. Last night we were around the dinner table and he said, mom, can we have some twice baked potatoes soon? Well, twice baked potatoes is something that I make just a couple times a year because I freeze them and they are so simple to just take out of the freezer and throw in the oven for an amazing side dish. And I do this when maybe at the end of the season when local farms are having a huge sale on 50 pound bags of potatoes. If you grow your own potatoes and you're worried about them going bad, this is also an amazing way to save them and have them throughout the entire year. I also tend to do this if I have a bag of potatoes in my pantry and they're starting to soften, I say, whoop, in the oven, let's go, let's preserve these potatoes. This is super simple. I've been doing it for about 10 years now and it's a recipe that I've never really written down because if you guys make mashed potatoes, you kind of just know what you're adding to it, what your family likes. This recipe is simple. It's pretty quick. I have the potatoes in the oven. I'm baking them. They're at 425 degrees. They have three minutes left. They've been in there about 45 minutes. I'm gonna do the fork test to see if they're done. And when they are done, I'll take them out and they will have to cool for a little bit. Depending on what your family likes, you can use additional ingredients. My kids love bacon, who doesn't? Bacon is an ingredient and we actually get our meat locally um, from local farms. So this is a package of bacon that I just took out of the freezer a little while ago, the, earlier this morning, and I'm going to be cooking this up and I will be using bacon bits inside my twice baked potatoes today. Other ingredients today, I use a light sour cream, I use a handful of cheddar cheese, I use salt, I use pepper, and a little bit of milk. If you use a splash of milk in your mashed potatoes, I think I only have unsweetened almond milk today. So it depends on the consistency of the mashed potato. I may or may not be adding milk today. Sometimes the sour cream is just enough. Butter, you can add butter if you want to. I might add a little bit of butter. And that's it, I have potatoes, sour cream, cheese, butter, milk, bacon. That's all you need. I check these babies. Ooh. Okay. Some of them are gonna be done, some of them are not. They're totally different sizes. <laughs> I'm gonna let them go another couple of minutes because I want it to be easy to scoop. You're gonna be scooping out the inside of these potatoes. You don't want it to be too hard. I'm gonna go in the, in the middle. I'm gonna go another 10 minutes. While the potatoes are still in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and get the bacon ready. Now, I cook bacon in the oven. It uh, doesn't make that much of a mess, and I don't have to babysit it. This is how I've been cooking bacon for probably 10 years now. I stopped doing it on the stove top when it just kept splashing back up at me, no matter even if I had a splash guard for the grease or not. So I've been cooking it in the oven like this for a long time and I've actually had a bunch of my friends now do it this way too because I was like, why are you cooking bacon on top of the stove? It still smells the house up beautifully and it doesn't make a mess. I have the bacon. It was still frozen in the middle but I tore it apart because I'm gonna be cutting all this up anyway. It doesn't need to be perfect slices but if you do let the bacon defrost all the way, it will be perfect slices. You'll see when I take it out how amazing it is. And I usually put this in the oven cold and I turn it on to 400 degrees and I let it cook while the temperature reaches 400. And usually by the time it reaches 400, it's perfectly done bacon. But because the oven is already on, I'm gonna have to keep a closer eye on this. So I'm gonna set a timer and make sure I watch it. Woo! All right. I am gonna set it for eight minutes and check it. The potatoes are done. They were in the oven about an hour. I am going to cut them in half and let them cool off. The bacon was not done at eight minutes. I put it in for another three, so I will check it then. Hot potato, hot potato. I am going to, you have to think about how you're gonna cut a twice baked potato because you want it to uh, be fillable <laughs> and you want it to sit properly. So I am gonna cut it 
this way because this sits nicely and this sits nicely. I know it might not make sense, but it is a hot potato. Woo! Right down the middle. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, it's lovely. Woo! Some of these are teeny tiny potatoes, but again, I'm slicing it this way. I love the little ones. They're perfect portion sizes for young children. Now I've actually cut the potatoes in half first and then baked them because I thought, well, that's, that would be easier and they would cook faster. But the problem is they formed a film on top of the potato and when I went to scoop out the potato to make the mashed filling, it was almost impossible and they ended up tearing. So definitely cook them whole. All right, timer just went off. I'm just gonna take a quick peek at the bacon. It could probably go another two minutes. You just have to watch it because it can burn real quickly, especially at 425 degrees. All right, let's cut the rest of these potatoes in half. All right, I'm going to move these potatoes back here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That is bacon perfected. You hear that sizzle? No fuss, no muss. Oh yeah. I'm going to grab a pair of tongs. Timer's going off. I took about 47 seconds sooner than I could have. Okay, so I just grabbed the bacon and throw it on the paper towels and let the grease drain. Okay, I'm going to let this cool down and it gets crispy as it sits on that paper towel as well and then I'll cut it up for the filling. Speaking of filling, okay, these potatoes are starting to cool down. All I'm doing is scooping out, I would say 80% of the potato. Let me get, so I made literally a scoop. If you guys have ever gotten twice baked potatoes as an appetizer at a restaurant or something, you know that it does have a little bit of a thick skin because you wanna have something uh, some sort of shell other than just the skin of the potato. So about 80% will come out. Oh, my stomach is growling, these potatoes and the bacon. It smells so good. Now I'm gonna freeze, I would say I'm gonna freeze 75% of these <laughs> and I'm gonna keep some out uh, for dinner tonight. One of the reasons why I like doing this um, because it is a little bit of work and I wouldn't necessarily have the time during the week to do this. This is something that I do set aside a couple hours, do it all and you do it one time and then you literally just have to pop them out of the freezer and throw them in the oven. Ugh, that's the perfect shell. Mm. It's so good. All right, I'm gonna finish these and then we'll make the filling. I have the empty shells of the potatoes. I lost two of them. Man down! What happens uh, when you're trying to dig the potato out is sometimes it breaks. But we don't, we use, we eat this. We still eat that part. And then all of the actual insides of the potatoes are in here. And we're gonna make mashed potatoes, but we're gonna add things like the sour cream and the bacon and the cheddar cheese. And then we're gonna put this back into that. All right, first thing I'm gonna add is some salt and pepper. I love just salt and pepper in my mashed potatoes. And I'm just gonna add probably a half a teaspoon since we are adding bacon. Um, and the bacon will also add lots of flavor. Okay, just some shakes of that. I never really measure out my salt and pepper unless I'm making chili, then I measure it out. Also gonna have to cut up the bacon. I use a light sour cream, you can use a heavy sour cream, you guys can really use anything you want. I'm starting with about a third of a cup. And with the cheddar cheese, I'm probably gonna go about a third of a cup as well. You guys can make it as cheesy or as not cheesy as you want. I just call it a handful, it equals out to be about a third of a cup. I'm gonna go ahead and start, that's not even plugged in. All right. That's probably gonna need some liquid, so I'm probably gonna have to get some uh, milk or whatever you guys use. You can use milk. I have almond milk. Um, it's not really gonna flavor it. It just helps with the consistency. I'm just chopping up some bacon. I'm not gonna use all of this bacon. I'll probably use four or five slices. 
Oh yeah, we need some liquid in there. It's a mass party. Okay, I'm gonna add some bacon. I'm gonna take this down. Now I'm gonna add the bacon, and I give it a little bit of a taste. It does need a little bit more salt. I'm gonna add another couple. I cannot believe I haven't um, sampled this bacon. I usually sample about a slice of it <laughs> when I'm cooking, but I've been really good lately. I'm gonna add a little bit more cheese. Okay, I'm just gonna clean up my workstation just a touch, and then we'll fill these back up. And then guess what you do? You bake them again, twice baked. So you can use a piping kit if you wanna do that. Honestly, I just keep it real simple, and I just grab it and I fill it just like that. You don't wanna fill it too much because you might not have enough to fill them all if you fill it too much. If you have extra, then you can go back and top them all off with a little bit of extra. They're all done. At this point, these are not twice baked potatoes because they've only been baked once. Now we can put them back in the oven at 425 degrees for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes in the oven, I just turned the broiler on just for a minute, just to get that like nice little golden brown coating on top. See how it's doing. Just another minute. perfectly kissed golden brown mmm now these are ready to eat right now so if you have no interest in freezing them you could definitely just serve them right now we like to serve them with a little bit of extra cheddar cheese on top and a dollop of sour cream and my husband likes to eat them with ranch dressing these are totally ready to eat but if you want to freeze them I recommend tray freezing them, which means putting the entire tray in the freezer, making sure that these are not touching. So you don't want any potatoes to be touching each other. You want them completely separate. So when they freeze, they freeze as individual servings. And then after about two hours in the freezer, you can put them in a Ziploc bag and you can take them out one at a time. And this is how I do potatoes. Usually I do batches that are three to four times the size of this one. This was just a bag of potatoes I had in the pantry that was starting to grow eyes. So I decided to turn them into this. We are a family of four, so I usually take out five every single time. And if anyone's feeling a little bit extra hungry, they eat the extra one, or my husband will take it to work the next day for lunch. We will be eating these for dinner tonight, so I'm gonna take off tonight's, and then I'm gonna put the rest in the freezer. I like that they're different sizes because I pick and choose like, oh, okay, I know my husband's gonna want this one because it's extra big. I'll take a middle, like it's basically like Goldilocks. We have mama bear, daddy bear, and then <laughs> My son is gonna want a smaller one. And then my daughter will also want like a medium sized one. Now I have five. I'll put this back in the oven tonight just to warm them through for dinner. This tray is really hot. I don't recommend throwing it in the freezer right now. You can either wait for this tray to cool down or transfer them to a tray that is not hot and put it right in the freezer. If you don't count freezer time, this side dish took me about an hour to make, but like I said, I made five five family servings. So the rest will go in the freezer. Oh my, well, I'm gonna have to find a spot. Got some of my sauces that I've saved. I've got all of our local meats in here. I think I can put it up here. All right, I had to move a couple things around here, um, but oh, have you guys tried these fruit pearls? Mm, they're so delicious. Uh, okay, so that will stay in there and I'll come back for it in just a couple hours. And there you have it. This is the camera that I was filming on and uh, the battery just died. Anyway, five family servings of twice baked potatoes, a family favorite for us, not the healthiest side dish, but definitely a crowd pleaser, especially when you can add your own toppings, fresh chives, sour cream, cheese, more bacon. It really is up to you guys and what your family loves. I hope you guys make this sometime and enjoy it. Let me know. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. I am really struggling not to eat one right now. It's very tempting. I'll see you later. It has been 
two hours and we have frozen potatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and bag these up. Can't even really tell that they're frozen. I'm gonna put these into a gallon sized freezer bag and because I tray froze them, when I wanna just take one out of the bag, I can. Woohoo! Twice baked potatoes for your freezer.